Alright, so a lot of you guys um, commented on my initial video on the uh, 95X V3 that I thought it was a uh, very loose pit tune and was kind of drifting around a lot. And quite a few of you guys uh, agreed with me that have this, that um, the pit tune isn't that great. And actually some of you disagreed with me, thought that the pit tune was pretty good. Uh, however, I think that a couple of you guys that did say that mentioned uh, you guys flew this in angle mode, which I don't fly at all. So it's quite possible that the tune was geared towards people that fly angle mode. That's quite possible. I haven't gotten any feedback from Beta FPV on that at all. Um, the way the Beta Flight works in angle mode is a little bit different than acro mode, so the tune might work better in those instances. I have no idea because I don't fly angle mode at all, um, and I never tested that. So it's, that's quite possible this tune is for those guys. So if you fly angle mode, you might want to give it a try on the stock tune and see if you like it or not. And um, if you fly acro mode, you want, might want to give it a shot before you change it. Um, again, you know, with pit tuning, it's it's a kind of uh, subjective and a feel thing. And some of you guys might like this pit tune that I'm going to show you guys, and some of you guys might not like it at all. So first things first, you should definitely um, save whatever pit that you have or whatever settings you have on your flight controller from this model. In case you don't like it, you can go back. Now, I will put a CLI dump to the original factory settings down in the description. You can always go back to those if you want, assuming you know how to uh, reset your flight controller by putting your CLI dump back in. And I will also put a CLI dump down in the description with these new settings that I have as I flew and uh, basically what I think I like, um, which is based on the uh, 650 milliamp hour force battery, which is, the, I think, the best battery for this. I did try some other ones. I'll explain that a little bit later. Now, I do have to caution you that uh, the motors might get hot with this tune, or they might even burn on you guys. So please check your motor temperatures. Don't just fly it and assume that's going to work for you because there are subtle differences in every build, even though they're all the exact same parts. Maybe a screw here or there might be a little bit tighter, and there might be more vibrations going into your flight controller versus mine, so my tune might cause your motors to overheat because I am uh, running a higher D gain than you would typically find. So again, I do caution you when you put this tune on and you're flying around, you know, fly it around for maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds land, check your motor temperatures, make sure you don't hear anything funny, make sure it's not flying away on you. Because um, if there's any subtle differences in the tune, you know, just little minor things uh, you, or, or in your build, then uh, you might have problems, you might have uh, hot motors, you know, maybe even burn motors. So really be careful. And again, use this. Uh, I really caution to use this at your own risk. Um, this might be a really good tune for you. It might be a terrible tune for you. It really kind of depends because I don't have your exact build in front of me. I'm just doing it based off of the build I got. And, I, and it's, you know, it's totally stock. I mean, I am flying with the Smo 4K camera, of course. So, you know, if you're not flying with the same exact weight, it might vary a little bit. Okay, so now I've got all the uh, warnings and disclaimers out of the way. Uh, let's go ahead and explain to you what I did. I'm not going to go into every little detail because, like, for example, some of these other tools like BL Heli Configurator, there's a lot of videos on how to use that. Uh, if you're a beginner, you don't know how to use that, just search on YouTube for videos on how to use the different tools that you're seeing here. I even have videos on my channel as well, so if you're looking for something specific, um, I'll, you know, leave me a comment and maybe I'll point you to a video that will help you. Uh, but for, for the most part, a lot of this stuff is kind of well known. I'm just going to give you, like, the things that I changed, and uh, you can make those changes. Or you can just use the it up, it's up to you. But I know some of you guys want a little bit of an explanation, but I'm not going to go into, like, a deep dive 30-minute, you know, to one-hour video explaining every little detail of this tune because it's just uh, kind of tedious and uh, not, 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 not really sure if it's going to really be that helpful to everyone. So the basis of this tune is from the uh, Betaflight 4.2 tuning guide, and I'm using the uh, what's called the cinematic presets. It's really meant for these kind of like HD recording type of flying where you're kind of flying nice and smooth and cinematically now, I know some of you guys were asking me for a tune that will work for more aggressive flying, in which case I would recommend that you don't use these settings that are basically from the 4.2 uh, tuning guide, these cinematic settings, 
because uh, you're not going to like that for for aggressive flying. Um, if you're like wondering, well, why can't I have a tune that will work for aggressive flying and for cinematic flying? I don't think uh, there is one that exists, but if you think you have one, let me know and I'll try and share it with someone because uh, basically the way the tuning works is if you want more smoother flights and better HD video, which is kind of the point of these CineWhoops, you should probably use the cinematic presets and just kind of forget about the uh, aggressive flying. If you're going to be flying, you know, doing acro and freestyle, that kind of stuff, I would suggest don't get one of these and don't fly one of these for that. Just get like a 3 inch or a 5 inch and uh, put a freestyle tune in that one. You can't really have you know, the best of both worlds, basically. Um, yeah, I mean, you might be able to get away with just using the default settings and I don't know, it might work. I don't know. I didn't test that. Uh, but these cinematic settings seem to be the ones that worked for me. Anyway, so I went ahead and I put in those uh, presets and um, I turned off D-Min, as I mentioned down in, in that tuning guide. Uh, the thing is, they wanted to, in, in this preset, they want you to raise the D gains about 20% higher than the P gains. And you, they want to have the P gains lower than what your typical, like, freestyle flying would be like. And I did fly that. I basically raised the P and D gain, I think, to like 1.1, uh, just a little bit. And uh, it was just way too loose. So uh, it might work if you have a very heavy battery, like if you're flying like a 1500 for us that could possibly be okay i don't know i didn't test that but but i found that those numbers were a little bit too low so i basically raised um the i guess it was the uh pd balance so that basically the d gains would be higher than the p gains by approximately 20 percent. i think it's maybe a little bit less in my case and then i raised the p and d gain to i think 1.3 or 1.4 and that at that point with the 650 milliamp hour 4S, I, I felt like I got a pretty locked in tune. And when I, what I mean by locked in tune is, been, is that when you're flying around, it feels predictable. So if you're, if you know you're going in a certain direction, it actually follows your stick inputs, uh, responsively and not so like basically with a lot of delay. Um, so you feel more confident when you're shooting gaps and stuff. And that's sort of the, that's kind of my goal for a tune is I just want to feel confident in knowing that when I point in a certain direction, I'm, and it's going to go in that direction. And I feel like it's not straying and drifting around, which is what the original tune was doing. So, okay. So for the rest of the settings, I did turn on RPM filter, uh, which wasn't turned on. This, this, this flight controller does have three two BDSC, so you might as well go ahead and turn it on. And then I went to uh, BL Heli 32 Configurator, and I increased the motor timing to 23 degrees, and I turned the PWM uh, frequency to 48 kilohertz. Now that's kind of optional. You don't really need to do that if you don't want to. Um, I think it does give you a little bit more flight time, and the motors did sound a little better. It didn't sound quite as notchy um, on versus 24 kilohertz. So I would recommend that, but of course you don't have to do that if you don't want to. And for this tune, I think I think it'll work pretty good. And then uh, for if you're running 48 kilohertz, you're going to want to go back into the CLI and put in a command called set thrust linear to 25. I think that helps with uh, low throttle instability. Um, it, it it actually kind of you know, I guess I think it boosts the P gains. I believe I'm not exactly 100 sure what that does, but uh, that's that's a setting that helps with 48 kilohertz. Now these are the uh, filter settings that I used. Um, I got these from various different quads I've been flying, uh, and just I kind of you kind of play around with them a little bit and see, you know, how it, how it affects the tune. And these numbers seem to be okay for this one. I, don't, I and another thing is like when on the um, on the filtering, I actually increased the filtering on the D gain side, so. Uh, because the motors were running a little bit warm, so I had a little bit more filtering because the D gains were fairly high at the setting of 1.4. Again, check your motor temperatures. Make sure that um, you're not it isn't too hot. If it is running too hot, then you're going to want to uh, basically bring your uh, P or your D gains down. So you can de either decrease your P and D gain, or you can decrease the P D balance, and I'll decrease your P or decrease your D gains. That's just what you want if you can hot motors. Yeah, so that's pretty much it in terms of the settings. And, uh, you know, as I said, I flew it with the, this tune is, is optimized for the 
uh, 650 milliamp hour forest. If you're going to go with a heavier battery like the um, the Forest 850, which is a little bit heavier, you can probably get away with a lower um, uh, P and D gain. Now, if you're going to go with a lighter battery like the 450 Forest, you're going to probably you can probably go and increase your P and D gain to something even, even higher. So maybe instead of 1.4, you go to 1.5 or 1.6, and then on the heavier battery, you can probably reduce it to like 1.3 or 1.2 really depends on how much flight time you want. I, I, I feel like you don't get that much more flight time on the 850, maybe a, a minute if you're you're not, not really flying too fast. And then the 450, I think, is just kind of too small. Uh, flight times are pretty short. I think you're going to get about, on the, four, four, on the 4S 650, you're going to get roughly four and a half minutes of flight time. And then on the 450, it's pretty low. It's like uh, two and a half to three minutes. So... Again, I recommend the 650 for this setup here if you're flying with the uh, SMO 4K camera or a naked GoPro. So that's pretty much it for the settings. Um, again, you know, uh, check your motor temperatures, play around with basically the PD balance and the PD gain. I think the rest of the stuff like the filtering and, and all that other things, you can probably just leave alone and don't mess with that. But if you're just wanting to get a little bit sharper feel, then just increase your P and D gain just a little bit because uh, on your build you may be okay. Whereas on mine, I was getting hotter motors and warmer motors as I as I raised the P D P and D gain above 1.4 on the Forest 650. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this video. Super long, sorry. I, I, I try to explain, you know, as much as possible without as little as time as possible. So hopefully this was helpful. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.